When we think of emotion, what do, what do we think of? What are some words that people feel when they think of emotion? Anyone? Energy. Energy. Anyone else? Yeah. Feeling. Yeah. How about specific emotions? What ones come up for folks? Anger. Anger. Yeah. Maybe one or two more? Sadness. Sadness. Joy. And joy. It's a pretty good representation. I'm glad joy came up. Sometimes I'll get people listing off, and it's like 25 in before an enjoyable emotion comes up. Um, and indeed, emotions have an energy, right? There is a force behind them. In the second half of this definition, we see that emotions actually efficiently coordinate our response systems. So they are set up to help us respond to the world around us. And the first part of this definition helps us understand that emotion um, is a process. It's, it's not just a kind of unidimensional event. I was sad. There is a trigger to our sadness. There is an experience of our sadness. And there's a response to that sad feeling. And when we help ourselves unpack that process, we can gain a little more understanding and awareness of our emotion. Um, I'll give you a sneak preview. I'm going to be talking about awareness of emotion throughout I think it's really a skill that can benefit us in, in a variety of ways. Now, we're not always emotional. We are emotional in response to something important to our welfare. And what does that mean? Well, it can be un unique to each one of us. Um, something important to me is that my, my cousin is here joining us for this event tonight. Um, but for the rest of you in this room, who's that guy, right? Doesn't matter. So what is important to us can be very unique. The triggers are um, specific. There are, of course, universal triggers. If there was a fire alarm, it would be universally triggering for us to be like, OK, now what next? Maybe fear, maybe irritation. <laughs> it could be a variety of responses, but a trigger that would be universal. Emotions have a variety of dimensions. They are expressed on the face. They are emerging from external and internal stimulus. This one deserves a little unpacking. So we can have an emotion in response to receiving the news that um, someone we really care about has had a promotion in their job. And that just makes us really happy. That's great. Oh, wow, wonderful. Um, what good news. We could also go home um, after a long day at work and just think about an interaction we had with a colleague or with a manager. And even though that event isn't occurring as we're at home on our couch, that internal stimulus of that thought arising elicits an emotion. And there's no difference, physiologically speaking, or subjectively, in terms of those triggers. So this is really important when we consider how we process our emotions on a daily basis. A lot of us tend to ruminate, to can think about what happened, especially if it's something difficult or something undesirable. And we don't necessarily consider what might be the implications of thinking about and kind of continuing to re-trigger that emotion. It can be taxing and exhausting on our system. So interesting to reflect on this idea that emotions are internal and externally um, stimulated. Emotions are felt in the body. We're going to do a little experiment where I see if I can help you, uh, help you with that and get a sense of palpably what's that like. And emotions are incredibly important for communication with others. That includes through the face. That includes through the voice, right? There's a difference in how I'm communicating with the tone. And there's huge individual differences. And the differences are not that some people are emotional and other people are not, or some people are only angry. Everyone experiences a full range of emotion. However, what we become emotional about is quite distinct due to our personal history and due to our um, often early imprints. And then how we become emotional is also quite different. So we do know that there are these kind of set points. Some people that we can, I'm sure, bring to mind easily, when they get angry, it is like zero to 1,000. And then there's those other people who we you know, maybe admire or envy who just seem like they never really lose their cool. So there's differences also in how we become emotional. And that is you know, the kind of dynamic um, intersection between how we were raised, what was going on around us in that environment, 
genetic predisposition, and any effortful work we've done to manage our emotions over time.